If you want to maximize the growth of your property investment in 2023, where should you be buying? In this video, we're going to be sharing some specific areas to look at and some general rules that you can apply if you want to assess areas of your own. And while it's always good to pick out the areas that will grow the most, it's actually a more important question in 2023 than it has been in a long time. And that's because I think we're going to see a real range of outcomes this year. So you do get years where Everywhere's doing really well because the economy's strong, people are feeling good, so everywhere performs. You also get years when everything's terrible, everywhere's falling at slightly different rates, but everything's down. I think this year's gonna be a real mix. So in the press, you'll be seeing what's happening to prices on average at a national level, but for you as an investor, that national average is almost completely irrelevant because I think there's gonna be such a big distribution of outcomes around that average. Some areas are probably gonna fall in price, some are gonna rise in price. So picking out the right ones is really important. We've already shared our main hotspots list for this year. We'll link to that in the description, but we wanna give you more because it's always good to have more areas to check out. So we've gone and looked at this list of 65 UK cities that's put together by HomeTrack. This data only comes out quarterly, so it's not completely up to date, but by going and looking at where has performed in the recent past and some of those trends, we can pick out some interesting observations of areas that we believe are going to continue to do well this year. So we're going to look at the top 20 locations for performance over the last year, and all of those locations had growth of 9% or more. So you see some very clear clusters. So there's a cluster in the northwest. You've got Wigan, Warrington and Rochdale. You've got a cluster in the East Midlands. You've got Nottingham, Mansfield and Derby. You've also got a couple in the West Midlands. You've got Birmingham and Telford. And then you've got some outliers. You've got Hastings, Gloucester and Bournemouth, which aren't anywhere near each other, aren't particularly near to other areas that are growing all that well. But that's what makes them interesting. So all those clusters are worth looking at if you're looking for an investment that's going to really grow this year. But if we put those outliers aside for a moment, I think those other clusters we mentioned are kind of guiding you towards areas that are worth looking at if you're looking for somewhere that's going to grow over the next year. Because it's not just one isolated place where there could be something particular that's happened in terms of employment or demand or something that's made that one area do well. It's the whole region. And that means that there's probably something happening at a regional basis that's driving prices. And we can talk about what a few of those things are. So they tend to be in parts of the country where prices are relatively low, affordability is relatively good, and they are economically strong. This is particularly important this year. It's always important, but it's particularly important because affordability is gonna come under pressure. Because mortgages have become more expensive, affordability has automatically got worse. So areas where affordability was already poor are gonna be even worse and the prices there are gonna struggle. Whereas in areas where it was good, they're gonna be affected less. Therefore, there's more potential for prices to continue growing. And especially if those areas are economically strong. There are plenty of other parts of the country, such as the Northeast, where affordability is good and prices are low, but they don't appear on any of those growth lists. And that's because their economic strength just isn't there at the moment. So you need to have those economic drivers in place. Just having cheap houses and good affordability isn't in itself enough as a recipe for growth. You can also see some more expensive areas on the list. So Manchester and Birmingham are in there. And because they are more expensive, affordability isn't so good, but they are underpinned by huge demand. So that's another thing to look out for if you're looking for an area that's going to grow. Manchester and Birmingham as cities just get stronger and stronger. Lots of jobs being created there, lots of people moving there, lots of graduates staying there. So even though they weren't bargains before, that's enough to create upward pressure on prices and upward pressure on rents. Rents in Birmingham and Manchester absolutely exploded over the last year because of all that demand, which is good news for investors as well. And if we go further down the list, it's very clear to see which areas you should be avoiding if you've got your eye on growth. London, Edinburgh, Oxford, Cambridge, all very low growth and very low yield. So there's just not much to like about them at the moment. Um, why is that the case? Because they've already had their run. All those places that extremely well in the first half of the cycle had loads of growth. As a result, there's not much room for more growth, affordability very poor, they're going to come under lots of pressure from higher interest rates, and there's just not a compelling reason, in my opinion, to be investing there right now. So that's where you might want to be looking if you want to get the most growth from your portfolio this year. But what if that's not your objective? What if you're more interested in collecting as much rental income as possible and maximizing your yield instead? Well, watch this video next, 
where we round up the best places to invest for yield in the UK.